Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode. This is just another podcast with Mick. And this is actually the 10th episode, so it's going to be a little special, a lot special, actually. And there's actually no point in hiding it right now because based off of the thumbnail and like the title of the video, you're already going to know. But we're, we'll get to that in a little bit. As usual, you guys already know that we have a few drinks on the podcast. So... Again, feel free to have a drink with me because we're just chilling, you know, just having a good time. Do the ASMR pour. Did I get that? Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So again, feel free to have a drink with me and cheers. Mm, it's very sweet. Okay, so now that we've had a little bit of a drink, let's go ahead and reveal our two guests for today. It's amazing, right? We have guests today. It's actually very, very weird and surreal, but yeah, very happy to have them on the podcast. So I'm going to be showing you guys now Pat Andrew of PH Murder Stories. Guys, say hi. Hello. Hi, everyone. <laughs> hi, guys. <laughs> so they are the two hosts of the podcast. So, yeah, do you guys want to introduce yourselves a little bit? Hi, guys. Um, I am Andrew. Um, I am the host of uh, host of PHMS for their main cases. Ako yung ano, male host. <laughs> <laughs> the male host. <laughs> mm, kailangan ko lang i-clarify na male ako. <laughs> <laughs> and me? Clearly, I am the female host. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> yes, Hi, yes. everyone. I'm Pat. I'm the female host of PH Murder Stories. Um, you may have listened to me on special episodes. For our listeners, you may have listened to me on our special episodes, such as the murder of Sonia and Frank Gregorio, our Valentine's Day episode, the disappearance of China Rose Sims. And yeah, for future episodes, you might uh, hear more of me. And I'm also the main host of our exclusive cases on Patreon. So you might want to check that out. So yeah, um, PH Murder Stories, that's the name of their podcast. Um, as you can tell, obviously, it has something to do with crime. They're a true crime podcast. They don't go around murdering people and talking about it online. Okay, that's not what they do. <laughs> So, yeah, do you guys want to give a little background um, about the podcast itself? So, um, PH Murder Stories, it started um, last year, August last year. And um, it started as just a website, actually. Mm -hmm. Like, we wanted it to just be a website. We would post the articles about the crimes that we may have heard of. And after a while, there were talks about um doing a podcast instead because i think around that time um podcasts were were really the thing i mean it was mm -hmm. during yeah. the quarantine period i think definitely like that's something i definitely started listening more to during the quarantine is podcasts for sure after a few more discussions about it we decided on doing a podcast because we were fans of not just true crime but uh, podcast as well. Yeah, ju just to give a quick background nga rin dun sa background ni Pat. Uh, <laughs> um, PA, yung PH Murder Stories kasi nag-start with the, ano, eh, to introduce lang yung writers namin which is si JC at si Philip. We're a team of six currently. Mm -hmm. Tapos yung si JC and si Philip, uh, friends namin, friends ko sila, friends namin sila since yung college days namin. And around like, ano, third year college, na nagkaroon nga sila ng parang initiative to start a website about ano eh, centering around yung mga Philippine murders and stuff. Bumalik yung idea in terms of starting a website tapos yun, nag nagkaroon ng discussion on like feasib feasibility stuff. Um, better to, na, nagkaroon na parang conclusion na better to adapt to like more modern media. So yun, doon nag-birth yung idea ng pag- uh, pag-start ng PH Murder Stories as a podcast. Grabe yung meetings nun. And if I remember correctly, I think si Doy yung nag-bring up ng podcast eh. 
ng podcast idea. To give context lang, not just a host, um, I am yung parang go-to guy for like, ano, kasi uh, mixing and clean up for the episodes eh. Kasi wala lang, na-bring up ka lang kasi may background ako dun eh. Mm-hmm. Sa like me, ano, audio production and stuff. So yeah, I think I think it's super cool that you guys like they're so serious. Um, like they're a team. Like as he said earlier, they're a team, and then they have all these meetings. And a while ago, he was saying that they had this meeting on the feasibility of a podcast, and it just seemed so serious. It's funny because like the reason why I started my podcast is because I was literally just wondering what the heck can I do on YouTube? Like what else can I do? Right? There's nothing more I can do than just talk to the camera. And I was just like, wait. What if I just sit down and talk to the camera longer, you know? <laughs> like that's that was literally how I how how I um started the podcast. That's how I got to it. Prior to creating the podcast, 'di ba? Parang may ano, marami ka nang vlogging stuff na na-create noon eh. So Well, yeah. But like yung experience diyan eh. It was just more of just so, like talking ito. head videos, right? I mm. always had a script. Mm. I'd always write it ahead of time. This would be just like me sitting down and just like ranting on the camera, which would, which is what I've been doing for the past uh, nine episodes, right? So, yeah. But anyway, um, other than um, all of that, why true crime? As we said, we start with nga to sa two writers namin, sila JC at si Philip. Uh, international relations students sila nung college. Um... Through that, maraming mga ano, discussions on like more political side, the dirtier, grimier parts of the Philippines. And knowing both of them... He's always had an affinity for true crime. Oh, and like ano, political discussion and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, so yeah, and writing. Parang dati niya pa ano, gusto mag-create ng some sort of output. Plus, si Philip naman, in terms of his history, I think, parang dati pa siya may community ano involvement sa ano nila sa parts nila sa tagig uh-huh. and through that yun nga may par- pareho silang may parang political affinity in terms of uh, political interest sa mga kung ano yung happenings and mechanics ng nangyayari sa Philippines in terms of government and stuff to start with parang naghanap siya ng mga people na kaya i-produce yung output nga na na-discuss before so two media um media graduates which is yung production side si Jared and me yung host slash yung cleanup crew ng audio but ako personally I'm ano really interested in sa true crime kasi kaka trigger ng curiosity mo like what happened next or kung nangyari man yun sa yon parang mapapaisip ka buti na lang hindi nangyari sa yon or yeah. ganon parang in a way precautionary measure din siya mm-hmm. Which I read then in an article before, na especially women, uh, very interested on women sa true crime, kasi they know that they're more vulnerable or more susceptible to ganong crimes or ganong attacks. So by listening to or by tuning in to true crime stories, ganon, you learn to be a little more cautious. Yeah, they at least know what to do or what to avoid. I, I remember reading like my first like reading something about rape in, uh, online and then it was like um it was a case I, I i don't remember it specifically but i remember the photo and i was just so scared i was just like oh my god she was i think the case was just like you know typical routine the girl's typical routine and then she just gets caught up in whatever like somebody abducts her And then like rapes her and then just throws her to the side. And I remember reading that I was like, oh my god, I'm never going outside again. Oh my god, try mong ano gawin to on a daily basis, weekly basis pa na magrecord ng mga gruesome stuff na pinagsusulat ng mga to. So you guys have been so, yeah, yeah, podcasting for like for the past few months, right? No, it hasn't been more than a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, um, you guys have been doing pretty well, like really well for someone who hasn't, you know, been doing this for over a year. What can you say that sets you apart from other true crime podcasts here in the Philippines? Well, I think what sets us apart is we have the most unique lineup of cases. Mm-hmm. So most true crime podcasts in the Philippines have episodes about Pepsi Paloma, Lucila Lalu, the Chop Chop Lady, um, Visconde Massacre, Nida Blanca. So th- those are the go-to cases of a lot of true crime podcasts mm-hmm. and we focus on lesser known cases 
because we want to shed light on them and we want to give them the the attention that they deserve because we feel that they also need to be heard amazing grabe yung ano yung grasp ng writers in terms of like the landscape of crime in the Philippines talaga eh. parang for leisurely time minsan parang TV patrol yata yung paboritong panoorin ng mga yun <laughs> What do you do in your pastime? Oh yeah, I watch TV <laughs> Patrol. Nila serials nila. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, speaking of... I Sorry, sorry. But, but like this is kind of a big deal for the both of them. Because on their podcast, they don't actually show their faces. It's a mostly audio type podcast. So this is actually the first time that they're revealing their faces. These are the faces, the hosts of PH Murder Story. <laughs> Take them in, people. Take them in. <laughs> yeah, actually, para before the ano nga, recording nito, parang nagkaka discussions kami na pat kung gaano kami ka nervous para lumabas. Eh. So naay kami talaga kasi sa kami, uh, sa ano, sa microphones lang, pero yeah, hindi yeah, yeah. on camera ano stuff. So hi yeah. guys, here's the face reveal of the hosts <laughs> of PH Murder Stories. There we go. Nice there we have it. All. <laughs> This is how you're gonna pitch. This is how you're gonna pitch this viewer, th- this uh, video to your viewers. Guys, space reveal. Space reveal. Uh. <laughs> so, since you guys are a team, right? So that's kind of like a struggle because there are a lot of you and there are different minds, you know, just kind of working together. In my case, it's usually just me. If anything, I just have, I, I have help from a friend. So at most my my team is me and my friend but like at the end of the day it, was there a learning curve to starting the podcast First off to ano lang work as a team I guess yung una kasi nagkaroon ng extensive meetings like kung paano is schedule lahat ng re- releases ng cases and stuff Yeah but other you, than you that you guys have to a lot time um, for that yeah Other than that yung division of workload kailangan intindihin kung paano mag ano magse-set ng timings for stuff I think meron ano eh meron individual na na struggles eh for myself I can speak to uh despite having a sort of background sa audio production different beast talaga yung pagka-create ng narrative na podcast so everything has to be perfect kasi um the 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 person listening should only ano eh has has the audio and at least siguro yung music na kinecreate uh, na background music for that Everything has to be super clean. So, mm-hmm. struggles for that nag lumabas in terms of like yung environment ng <laughs> no audio recording kasi pareho ako kami ni Pat, eh. first time pa lang magkaroon yeah. ng experience with using condenser mics and stuff. Nag nagkaroon ng argument na naglast siguro almost two weeks to a whole month about yung mga aircon sa bahay. I'm sure you can relate doon. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, like, uh, no. this is why we are currently shooting this at 1:50 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> It's well, the most quiet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, naging reason yah. We usually start yah from ano either 12:10 to 12:30 around that time. Yeah, I I, I totally get that because like before I shoot anything, I'm gonna go outside. I'm gonna make a public announcement. Like I'm gonna shoot a video. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and then like it's like the minute anybody makes sound, I'm just going to be like I don't like lots of cuts uh, on the podcast cuz I just want it to be as fluid as possible. I don't I never want anybody to think that like my podcasts are scripted. So like in at at like best case scenario there are no cuts, but when there are cuts, it's because somebody's making noise. Like somebody slams the door or somebody like screams somebody's name. Yeah, that's that, that 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 was such a that's such a big learning curve even to this day. I mean, it's it's not something that's easy to work around. Well, in my case, because I was more on the social media aspect of PHMS, mm-hmm. so I think yung yung naging learning curve ko don was ano yung parang pinaka optimal time on regarding postings, like how many posts ba in a day, how often what time what platforms and all that so i had to yeah look into those um factors in terms of podcasting talaga mm, i think as a team learning process din siya ever since we started um since august and lahat naman nakakapag-pitch in ng ideas lahat tumutulong 
um, especially din yung writers talaga sila rin sila talaga yung like brain ng podcast and w- without them wala talaga to so mm-hmm. um, it's just nice na um, through our individual efforts nag kakaroon ng magandang output yung hard work nila and we me and Doy we try our best to deliver yung yung naging um, work ng writers namin so yun and Ay, along i- the add way, ko lang ha sinesell mm-hmm. sinesell ni Pat sarili niya short dito eh, kasi parang tingin ko siya yung pinaka may diverse na ano eh na set of workloads <laughs> siya naga, na social media manager plus ano ano pa ba article writers social para dun sa ano tapos nag host <laughs> Para siyang ano eh, pinaka tawag dito. Well, pinaka right. nag uh, uphold ng lahat ng a, li- a little bit of lahat ng responsibilities ng podcast eh. Except na lang siguro sa editing which is si Jared yung yeah. nagme-main doon. Lahat tinap mo. Let's go. Oh, director. Woo! Oh, yun. Ayun yung directing side nga pala <laughs> kailangan natin mo i-discuss. Baliktad. Mm. <laughs> oh, lahat ng pa. ano, lahat oh, ng ep- every episode na nilalabas <laughs> ng Every episode na nilalabas ng PHMS is composed of record kami ng actual scripts na write nung ano ng writers tapos din direct niya to see lang if meron bang kung ari inconsistency sa ano sa delivery minsan hindi mo kasi maka-catch ng ano yan eh ng ikaw lang mm-hmm. yun yung na discover ko sa like narrative format din so yun So going back to what you were saying earlier, the part where, you know, like working as a team from the beginning is like, it's always been a work in progress. So how do you make it work really? Like, how do you make it work as a team? Like, are are there really any big problems going into like the process and all of that? Well, as a team, um, we already have this relationship. Like we already have, I mean, we were all friends to begin with, so parang we already know how one works or ano yung personality ng isa. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> we're able to um, jive well. And also, we have our individual strengths and weaknesses. Um, and if ever man na may kailangan ng tulong or may kailangan ng um, more guidance on something sa podcast then the other the others um can help out they willingly help out so i think very supportive talaga yung uh, bawat member and very willing then to help out one another kaya there's no um talagang difficulty working with one another kilig ako doon madali kami <laughs> makatrabaho yeah <laughs> Yeah, but um, because nice we already recorded the time where I, you know, was a was a guest host on their podcast, and we recorded from like 12 a.m. up to like 4 a.m. Right? Yeah. And it was a relatively mm. short script. Oh. Yeah, but then like you guys were they they were so nice to me. Like that was my first time ever like narrating stuff, and it is very different. Like really trying to tell the story through your voice as apart from just you know like me ranting on the camera those are two completely different things but I, i i think i had a little bit of a hard time but they were so so nice to me and i think that was like the biggest thing because like they said like um they support each other and like other people's weaknesses like you can you know, help them out that's one thing that i really really appreciated during that process because like when it's me and i'm shooting from like 12 a.m. up to like 3 a.m. I'm just getting mad at myself. I'm alone in my room and I'm just like, Mick, <laughs> you're so annoying. But the, but with them, it was so uplifting because they were so nice to me and they were so supportive. So I feel like that's such a big thing. And the fact that you guys are friends. Yeah, actually, new, new experience din yun sa amin eh. We already have had a collaboration with a uh, another podcast, si PH Campfire Stories with Earl. Um, hindi hindi the same setting na kinreate natin yung ano eh, yung Juan Luna episode for us. Um, the process was two episodes yung ginawa namin before written individually by each party relating to yung case ng first serial killer in the Philippines. So even for us actually parang first time yun eh. Nakakatuwa nga yung experience na live recording with ano with a guest ano 
with a guest host. Baka nga i-propose pa namin yung format na yun further down the line eh. Or if game ka bumalik, <laughs> open kami for that if ever. Fun siya. No, the same way nga. No, na experience mo. Yeah, it was so much fun. And then just like the fact that you guys can joke around in the middle of it. I mean, it, it was so <laughs> uplifting. That, like, yeah. It's so different when you're with other people as opposed to when you're just shooting by yourself. Because it can get it can get really mm. frustrating, like when you can't get a when you can't get a specific line right. That happens to me too. Like when I shoot my videos, um, it's a script, right? So sometimes I can't get it right, especially now that I'm making tech videos because they're very well, technical, right? So like I have to memorize these specs, and sometimes I can't. Like my my tongue gets so twisted and it's it's so hard, and it's just it's just so annoying. Just there's nobody here to comfort me. I mean, it's, it's really just me. So, but it's, it's, it's so annoying. But I mean, having a group of people with you, just through your friends, and you can help each other out. So, yeah, cases. So, since you guys um, have done a lot of videos and all of that, which, or like individually, which case has intrigued you the most as hosts on the podcast? Sure, parang mentioned ko yata earlier na ano, I think kulang ng exposure yung um, mga historical murders in the Philippines. So, number mm-hmm. one, siguro yung naging collaboration namin with yung si PH Campfire Stories, si Earl. Um, kinover namin yung first serial, uh, ano, recorded serial killer in the Philippines. Was that yung first serial killer in the Philippines? Number one, yun. Second is, uh, originally gusto kong i-cover si, ano, yung um, Antonio Luna na case yung yung idea of uh, Aguinaldo ordering the murder of Antonio Luna um, but ayun, some, somehow dumating ay de, dahil brother niya dumating dun sa mas interesting na case na si Juan Luna even I didn't know na pinatay my history siya of killing uh, his ex uh, killing his ex-wife plus yung ano plus yung family and I was like, wow, yung dude na nakita kong painting sa uh, National Museum, may history of murder pala yun. Whoa. Yeah. Like, I then, remember reading ayun. the script, so I was like, what? <laughs> Personally, yung two cases na yun, that's for me. Paano yun? Yun din yung answer ko. <laughs> ah, talaga? Yung both? <laughs> you guys um, have the same answer? <laughs> yeah, well, yung with two? one... Oh, With one Luna uh, kasi. But you wouldn't think of Juan Luna as like that, di ba, na, na may dark past pala na nagawa niya yun sa wife niya and his mother-in-law. So yun, like, he was this renowned Filipino artist. Sad boy art. Sad boy and art. <laughs> 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 Parang behind all that pala, he had this dark past mm-hmm. na, Who would have na we were able to write about, we were able to tackle, and with you, you were able to deliver um, yung pag- narrate no story <laughs> so yeah, it was yeah it was an interesting case and the same then with another collab with yun nga PH Campfire Stories si Father Maliari cause I remember um we had this article na why are there no serial killers or why are there not as much serial killers in the Philippines akala namin wala talaga or maybe sobrang galing lang na hindi pa nauhuli. Pero yun you know. pala dating back to centuries ago, meron na rin naman pala. So, ayun, like it was also um, really interesting to like see that other side of people na, and what they're capable of. The dark, twisted things that they're capable of. So, both of you are into the historical cases, Ria. Speaking of historical cases, and not to mention one of the fav- uh, both of their favorites actually is the one that I um, was a guest on. So we talked about Juan Luna's dark past. As said earlier, you know, one of the things that you don't really expect from very famous people. Most people know Juan Luna as the national hero who cre- uh, painted the Spolarium, which is in this place, uh, National Museum in Manila. Um, looking at that picture, um, and uh, upon listening and narrating the case, parang makikita mo talaga kung pa- kung paano nag-go through yung sort of ano eh, artistic process ng taong may that sort of mm-hmm. parang 
history. Kilala mo siya as this parang siguro widely considered as the greatest artist in Philippine history na siguro or at least the most well known. And even those people, um, though artists are known to be flawed, para considering the span of time between the modern age and kung kailan nag-exist si ano eh, si Juan Luna, parang ano na siya, sort of legendary figure na na parang infallible in mo, in the in the minds of most people, considering na nakikita siya lagi sa like history books and stuff. Um, which almost never mentions yung history niya it's a case nga na na cover natin with ano with his wife in Paris yeah that would be so super weird right mm. to see that in a textbook yeah. like oh oh mm-hmm. oh yeah he painted the spolarium also yeah, mapap- he beat his wife to death <laughs> <laughs> so like, uh-huh. <laughs> Mapapaisip pa yung mga tao eh. Kung But honestly, I think that would have made class so much more interesting. <laughs> like, <laughs> ooh. He shot his wife, right? Mm. Yeah. Domestic abuse and murder. Yeah. And according to the script that I read, <laughs> I don't have any mm. basis. I don't have sources. According to the script that I read on, the, on their podcast, he was given a pass for temporary Ill- uh, so, sorry temporary insanity something like that right yeah something like that basta ano um nagkaroon lang parang very very minimal consequences for the crimes na kinumbit niya wala pa parang he had to pay a fine tapos ayun another sobrang babang fine <laughs> yeah it's oh. so another payment for ano parang yung stamp for something mm. Ayun, but other than that, he got away with with murder. And the mention din sa case, eh, parang medyo ano yun, normal kasi yung habit, yung ano na yan, um, that sort of treatment. Ah yeah, to, at the time. Ano, to wives of the mm-hmm. uh, at the time dun sa Paris, so he mm-hmm. had that advantage. Parang mas lose sa kanya yung government in terms of consequences for that. Merong law at the time na spouse or husbands are allowed to kill or hurt mm. their spa- their wife unspoken law lang siya like sort of a cultural mm. norm lang. can you imagine mm. living in that time yeah, yeah. no de. no he can't imagine because he's a man no. <laughs> oh get out of here uwi na ako cancel joke <laughs> andrew mawawalan na ng host ang ph murder stories Um, after this episode, Pat will be the only host on PH. <laughs> <laughs> But um, okay, so we've been talking about you know, the, the historical cases, the, um, something that they're both big fans of. But let's talk about something a little more recent, a case that they tackled a little more recently, like Fabel Pineda's case. So this is something that happened just last year in the midst of the quarantine here in the Philippines, where everything was very strict um but i'll i'll leave that to you guys to shed a little light on the topic so yeah um like what you've said um this case happened in the midst of uh the lockdowns meron kasing nangyayaring um uh sex for pass sa mga checkpoints so unfortunately si fabel and her cousin they were victims of this scheme You know, uh, policemen taking advantage of their power, and, <laughs> and deep sigh. I'm sorry. <laughs> yun nga, um, they would use sex or take advantage of these young women yeah, or that's anyone. Para lang makadaan na, makauwi na. Kailangan pagdaanan pa to. Yeah, for Fabel's case, I think they were on their way home or something, and. They were stopped by these two policemen, and yun nga in exchange for or para maka uh, pasok na sa area nila kailangan makipagsex sila. They must have refused because these policemen uh, ended up sexually assaulting them without their consent. And one of the many cases then at that time, because yun nga very apparent yung ganon in different areas in the Philippines. And ayun, so when Fabel and her cousin went to um, complain about that that incident, 
instead na yung system be on their side, instead na matulungan sila. They sided with the police. Or yung policemen mismo, they they did something na lang to to put an end to it. And they ended up killing Fabel Pineda. At that time nga, siguro not a lot of people knew about it. Kasi this was happening while um, there was this issue going on with ABS-CBN and their franchise and all that. So, para so overshadowed. Uh, yeah. Overshower. <laughs> overshadow. <laughs> Na-overshadow yung issue ni Fabel. So, kami na PHMS, we wanted to bring attention to Fabel kasi mm-hmm. this was a more serious po- problem. This is an injustice to this young girl. She suffered this um, fate na... How old was she? Around 15? 16? Fif- 15? Teenager lang siya. Minor. <sighs> Grabe, 15. What? That's that's insane. That's too much. I mean, like, if it were any age, it would still be too much. <laughs> but, mm. you know, like, she was a child. Just to give a little context, here in the Philippines, so we have, um, we've been in quarantine for more than a year already, which is insane. But uh, the thing is, when we're in our, like, the highest form of quarantine, like, the most strict, rather, it's called enhanced community quarantine, or as we call it here, it's called ECQ. And basically, when ECQ is implemented in a certain area, something like the National Capital Region, or basically the city, the metropolitan area, uh, they like to put checkpoints at like borders and all. Maybe sometimes even within the city. So basically, you'd have to pass. Even if you're in a private vehicle, you're gonna have to pass this checkpoint. And then policemen or military, are, they're gonna they're gonna be checking your car, like to see how many people are in it, um, if you're complying um, with you know the face masks and all of that. Sometimes it does get very difficult to get from point A to point. B and you know as stated in this case there was um, an obvious abuse in power wherein they exchange um, getting through for sex so yeah just a little context for people who don't know um, what the checkpoints in this um, case mean that's that's just how it works here in the Philippines right now which absolutely sucks but it is what it is uh, currently, we are in MECQ or Modified Enhanced community, community Quarantine, which is still pretty strict, but with lessened, with a lessened implementation of these said checkpoints. So, yeah. Is there anything else you want to say about the case? <laughs> Another particularly ano, eh, interesting case din to eh. Um, I think ito yung case na pinaka, like, nage-embody ng kung paano kinoconstruct yung cases within the PH Murder Stories podcast nga. Interests ng, uh, ng writers namin, si JC and si Philip, to start with b- before, I think, na-trigger sila mag-write ng articles to begin with dahil sa mga certain injustices na katulad na ito. If you listen back to yung ABS-CB, uh, yung, ano, yung podcast episode na yun, you'd see na yung uh, na-cover extensively yung part na this was around the same time na, and, na ano nga na nagkakaroon ng cha- ng shutdown per ABS-CBN which is a uh, major, a major um, channel television like network in the Philippines yeah. uh, I think the biggest nga eh, the biggest television ano, network in the Philippines knowing that knowing the nature of yung risk of that sort of company getting shut down due to like franchising issues um all hands are on deck sa side nila in terms of getting people to side with their their cause which is uh something honorable naman and something worth fighting for which is parang press freedom then but sad thing is uh reality still existed outside that issue eh. and so nangyari nga yung kay Fabel Pineda mm-hmm. Uh, interesting reflection nito to, to, to society is like they the media side has worked for you know for the defense of ABS-CBN but it also sh- this case also shows the power na nagkakaroon ng people ang um, society through ano, through like social media and the internet and stuff the only reason we actually heard of this case is a minimal coverage through news sites and articles 
secondary is yung outcries ng mga people for ano on, on for social media yeah. so ganun ya hindi siya hindi siya as covered as it should have been while the CEO I believe of ABS-CBN is pleading through Congress to get the channel up and about so that's what PH Murder Stories is all about I think in etong case, one of the cases na pinaka nag embody nga talaga ng beliefs ng writers, ng founders of PH Murder Stories to shed light on these kinds of tragedies when no one, ano, no one, no one of power will. I mean, Kinover naman, not as extensively though. So, yeah, I guess that concludes this episode. You know, things are shutting down. My light has died in the background <laughs> but yeah um if you guys are interested in these cases like these true crime cases like again in the case of fabel pineda you know if you want to learn a little more about cases like hers please do go check out ph murder stories they're on pretty much every major um streaming platform they're on spotify google podcast they're on apple also they have a youtube channel that they started posting on recently so please go check that out they're content is absolutely great i had a great time collaborating with them I'm, I'm, i'm very very happy that they took they took my um my collaboration virginity <laughs> they were my first and they were very gentle <laughs> Why did I say that? it is it is what it is at 2:46 a.m <laughs> yeah thank you Anyway. Buti naman, naging gentle pala kami sa first time mo. Wala kang gentle eh. So yeah, please, please go check them out. They're great people. Their team is absolutely amazing as well. I was able to sit down and talk to all of them on their meetings. They were, you know, nice enough to let me join their meetings as well. But yeah, um, a word from the two hosts themselves. Yeah, thanks for, ano, Thanks for joining the podcast. Uh, nag-enjoy rin kami as well. Super fun makakolaborate in live like live setting and to be we are honored to be premiered for the first time as PH Murder Stories for the first time in video sa ano YouTube. Face reveal. Um <laughs> Yeah, as Bianca said, um, PH Murder Stories is available in, on almost every major platform for podcasts. So you know, check it out most mainly on Spotify. We're trying to get into YouTube lately. Check out our upcoming case. Kakalabas lang ng conclusion ng um, Jovi Espinido case, case 6. And around like two weeks later, no, pat lalabas yung Hacienda Luisita Hacienda Massacre. Luisita. Which, is, yeah, which is historically one of the most controversial ano, cases politically and in terms of human rights in the Philippines. So yeah, thank you Bianca for... Um, collaborating with us you were really fun to be with and yeah this is my or well me and Doy this is our first time showing ourselves on camera because mm-hmm. we're so used being behind the scenes so yeah it's an honor <laughs> to do this with you like I mentioned earlier I'm the female host of PHMS and you can hear more of me on our Patreon exclusive cases We already have the murder of Joanna de Mafelis in Kuwait, as well as the abduction and killing of Ruby Rose Barameda. So mm-hmm. please do check out those episodes, and we have plenty more um, interesting and complex cases waiting for you there. So yeah, please check it out. So you guys know they're legit because they have a Patreon. That's when you know. <laughs> That's when you know. <laughs> Once again, one more time, thank you guys for being guests on the podcast. My camera has died, so I'm going to end it here on our Zoom meeting. So, yeah, that's pretty much that for this video. I hope everybody enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe. Cheers.